Hey guys, can you hear me? How's it going? I'm Josh Garcia. My goal for today is to give you an easy to digest, one-stop shop, A to Z conversation, covering all the reasons why a plant-based diet is important and optimal in only 20 minutes, because I only got 20 minutes. So most people go plant-based for three reasons, environmental reasons, animal rights reasons, or health reasons. They're all perfectly good on their own, but I've always considered myself an environmentalist. I recycle, I drive an electric car, I put conservation in all of my documentaries, so when a good friend said to me, you can't call yourself an environmentalist and eat meat, of course that caught my attention, right? At first I was defensive. I thought, sure I can. I like grass-fed, free-range, organic, local, sustainably raised, humane, dolphin safe, etc., etc. Meat, cheese, dairy, and eggs. But here's what I didn't know. Animal agriculture is incredibly resource intensive. For starters, a lactating cow can consume about 100 pounds of grain a day. So if we want to keep eating her and her sisters, we have to grow and harvest 100 pounds of grain a day for each of the one and a half billion cows on the planet. That totals 135 billion pounds of corn, sorghum, grain, alfalfa, soy, etc. And 45 billion gallons of water to sustain them. That's enough grain to feed over six times the amount of people on our entire planet. So where do we do all this agriculture? More often than not, we bulldoze down our native landscapes and rainforests, right? We burn them to make room to graze and raise all these cows, which is a huge reason why deforestation and species extinction is occurring faster today than ever. Now, this doesn't include the pigs, the chickens, all those other animals we eat, just the cows is all I'm talking about. So to grow all the grain to feed all of these animals takes a ton of water, as I mentioned. Different studies report different findings, but on average, we'll find that one gallon of milk is 880 to 1,000 gallons of water. And no one's giving up beef either. As they mentioned, my study showed 2,500 gallons of water for one pound of beef. Meat and dairy use more than one third of the fresh water resources that we have available to us today on the planet. A meat eater requires 4,000 gallons of water a month to sustain their food supply. A vegetarian or a vegan, around 300. All the animals in captivity for food today are more responsible for global warming than all the transportation in the world combined. And here's why. It's the largest producer of methane in the US. And that, is the burps and farts of animals that we eat, right? Those burps and farts are 20 times more powerful at warming our environment than the CO2 that comes from cars. On top of that, 65% of the nitrous oxide gases in the air come from meat and dairy industries. And those are 300 times more powerful at trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere than the CO2 that comes from cars, and yes, these same climate changing gases also come from humanely raised, grass fed, organic meat, dairy, chicken, and eggs. So, the more CO2 is emitted from cars, it's not nearly as efficient at warming our planet as methane and nitrous oxides from animal agriculture. And that's why animal agriculture is ahead of cars and responsible for 18% of greenhouse gases that are warming our planet today. And that's more than all of transportation today. But the pollution from animal agriculture is just way more than the gases alone, right? If there's that many cows in the world, what about all that poop? A farm with 2,500 dairy cows produces the same amount of waste as a city with 411,000 people. And on a global scale, it's estimated that animal agriculture is putting 116,000 pounds of fecal matter into our environment every second. That's a lot of poop. Now the argument could be made that, hey, poop's great fertilizer. It's totally natural and it's part of the circle of life, right? You're totally right. 
But what I'm saying is the rate at which all this poop is entering our environment is far from what nature intended. And way more than our waterways and soil can handle. And this is why the majority of our fresh water resources are no longer drinkable without some sort of filtration. So after slaughtering all these animals, there's all these other waste industry waste products like inedible animal tissues, organs, ligaments, tendons, blood vessels, bones, the list goes on. And this can compromise up to 45% or more of the slaughtered animal. That's half an animal that's going to waste and going directly into our landfills because we want to pick and choose which muscles we want to eat. People tell me eating meat is natural, but this doesn't seem very natural to me. And this does not seem sustainable either. Here's what is sustainable. One and a half acres of land can produce a yield of 37,000 pounds of plant-based food, or 375 pounds of meat. Plants give a thousand times the yield that meat and dairy and cheese egg industries do. So what would you choose to feed our growing, very hungry planet, right? I hear you saying, meat's natural. We got canines. Meat's natural. But just because we have canines does not mean we're meant to eat meat. Some of the animals in the animal kingdom with the most ferocious teeth are herbivores. Got gelato baboon, gorillas, saber-toothed deer. Perfect examples. Our canine teeth do not mean we're meant to eat meat. Besides, our canine teeth are so sorry and sad compared to the tigers, the bears, the real meat eaters of the animal kingdom. We don't use them to tear into flesh. We use forks and knives. And we don't hunt and chase our prey either. We go to the grocery store. I was raised with the impression that eating animals is healthy. But regardless of what stance you take, we now know it's the exact opposite. You may have heard the World Health Organization just released a study linking high cancer risk to meat consumption for processed meat, etc., etc. And, and the meat and dairy industries are all up in arms about it, of course. But the timing is perfect. But in 1903, the same headline was released. Did I just say 1903? Yes, I did. We've known for over a century that meat is linked to cancer. Over a century. But you know what? I didn't do these studies, so let's just get rid of those. Let's just play devil's advocate and forget about those. Here's what we can relate to. If you don't pour meat grease down the drain for fear of clogging it, why are we eating it? Americans are now eating 201 and a half pounds of meat per year, per person. That's like an entire human, that's meat. And what's sore with that growing meat consumption rate? Cancer. Cancer is not genetic. Cancer is something that's been occurring in our culture for a long time, alongside the increase of meat consumption, right? Who here knows what atherosclerosis is? For those of you who don't, it affects millions of Americans every year. And it's the buildup of plaque in the arteries from eating a diet high in cholesterol. And that cholesterol comes from animal products that we eat. It doesn't exist in plant-based foods. It's only in animal products. And that built up of cholesterol obstructs the movement of blood flow to the brain and to our vital organs. So when that blood flow is blocked by atherosclerotic plaques, right, we have heart attacks, heart disease, etc. Here's my point. Animals designed to eat other animals, the real carnivores of the animal kingdom, can eat all the animals they want all the cholesterol they want, and they will never develop heart disease, atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, whatever. But Americans, at least 33% of us, are suffering from high cholesterol. We're biologically herbivore. Behaviorally, maybe something else. Biologically, herbivore. It's slowly killing us. But if it's natural to eat meat, if our bodies are really cut out for this, right? Then please go catch your prey with your bare hands. Eat all the body parts raw. No cooking, no sauces, no spices. 
and tell me that eating meat is natural. And then it tastes good too, right? We all have cupboards filled with pepper, garlic, onion, chili, oregano, cumin, allspice, basil, my favorite. But let me ask you, if we love the taste of meat so much, why do we always try to make it taste like plants? You know, one of the biggest obstacles for me as a man was fear of becoming too skinny. Meat was the center of every meal growing up for me, and I was living with 33 years of programming that I needed it, I had to have it, to be healthy, to be strong, to look like a man, right? But when I realized what it was doing to our planet, to my cholesterol, which was very high at one point, and to God's beautiful creatures, I was determined to prove I could be a man, look like one, and be a compassionate vegan. And I've been working out very hard so that I can make a living. I want to be an example. Vegans get more than enough protein. Do I look like I'm not getting enough protein? Please tell me. And I'm not taking off my shirt for validation. So that you tell me I'm sexy, though. If you want to tell me I'm sexy, I would love to hear that. Oh, By the way, how are my abs in this lighting? Let's see if I can make them pop. <laughs> Every day, I work hard to be a living, walking, breathing example that vegans can build muscle, can be athletes, with all that, without all that saturated fat, the cholesterol, and the environmental destruction present in a daily bodybuilding milk and meat-laden diet. I'm getting naked for a cause, and I have a point to prove, and I'm not alone. There's a huge vegan bodybuilding community out there, and fitness community, and if we think about it, the strongest and biggest land animals, elephants, rhinos, gorillas, horses, all eat a 100% plant-based vegan diet. As a matter of fact, the strongest man in the world, Patrick Babusian, Big, mean Russian guy, 100% vegan. People eat meat to think they're going to become as strong as an ox, but they forget the ox eats grass. <laughs> and there's so many sources of complete vegan protein out there, right? Seeds, seitan, whole grains like quinoa, whole leafy greens, potatoes, broccoli, tempeh, oatmeal, hummus, avocados, the list goes on and on and on. The world is filled with people that are fed up with all the water contamination, deforestation, air pollution, endangered species die-offs, dead zones, and even when we're educated, we make, the education, we make the connection between animal agriculture and the destruction of our planet, we still refuse to give up meat. We make excuse after excuse and use every trick in the book to talk ourselves out of veganism. I bet even if all media said all life on earth will end in 20 years, if we don't give up eating animals now, we'd still find a way to justify eating meat. Why is no one willing to change? All we have to do is make different choices when we go to the grocery store. You can eat vegan to bodybuild, you can eat vegan paleo, you can eat vegan junk food, which I absolutely love. I think it's actually far better. It's all there. Why do we insist on eating the bodies of a few animals when there's over 80,000 edible plants in the world? When you go vegan, you don't lose anything. You actually open yourself up to a ton of healthful living options you probably never would have tried had you stayed in your conventional standard American diet. Again, most people go vegan for three reasons. Animal rights, environmental, or health. When you open yourself up to the one that speaks to you the most, you'll find the other two become just as important. And as a triad, there's really no valid argument against veganism. Bottom line, we all deserve the right to clean air, clean water, a clean environment. As a matter of fact, we need it to be healthy. It doesn't need us. And what we do to it, we do to ourselves. So why veganism and starvation? It's a sustainable source of food, ends pollution, 
defends animals' rights. Good for our health. Ends deforestation, protects the environment. But you know what, forget about all of that. It doesn't really matter if we're designed to eat meat or not, if it's sustainable or not, right? Or if, or if animals, it helps them or not, right? Let's just forget about that. Richard Lysoff put it perfectly. None of that matters. What matters is what we know, and that is that the killing of billions of land animals every year for food and clothes has helped put this planet in the place it's in today, in the climate change crisis we're in today. Veganism offers a solution to our declining planet's health, our fished out oceans, starvation, species extinction, rainforest destruction, global warming. The human race has backed itself into a corner. Veganism offers a way out. So let's move forward. I want to close with a thought. History will remember us for one thing and one thing only. We'll be known as the generation that did or did not keep this planet habitable for human health. The people that came before us didn't know about climate change, right? And the ones that came after will be too powerless to stop it. It's on us. It's our collective action in the coming months and years that will determine life on Earth, which makes each and every one of us the very opposite of powerless people. Don't leave the world the way you found it. I'm Josh Garcia, and if you guys want more reinforcement about the, the importance of a plant-based lifestyle, please come up to this table over here, provide me with your email, I'll send you links to my one-stop shop A to Z conversations about why plant-based diet is, is optimal for our nutrition, for our health, for our well-being. I also have uh, my social media links on there, which you can check out. I follow tons of people that are constantly posting great, high-protein, really nutritious food options that are environmentally friendly and sustainable and super tasty. I'm also giving out some free cocoa milk caramels. If you guys have never had a cocoa milk caramel, I'd love to. I'd love to have you try them in exchange for your email. Instead of using the milk products from uh, a cow, we're using coconut cream in these caramels. They're excellent, and uh, cocoa milk has been very good to me and uh, stands behind what I do in my lectures. So please provide me with your email, guys. I have a few seconds to answer any questions. If anybody has any questions, I brainwashed all of you. Excellent. I'm successful. Yes. Uh, I've been working out my whole life. I've been working out my whole life. And interestingly, people go, oh, I can just eat vegan and suddenly I'll have abs. That's not the case. Many of us know there is no caloric deficit in a vegan diet. As a matter of fact, there's tons of calories, fat, protein, of course, and carbohydrates in a vegan diet. You can get shredded on a meat diet and you can do it on a vegan diet. It's the application of physique nutrition that gives you a nice body, right? I know many overweight vegans in my life, and I know very healthy vegans in my life, as I do with conventional eaters. So going vegan isn't just the magic like, oh, I'm going to eat you know, plants and suddenly I'll be shredded. Yeah, we might lose weight. Yes, there's probably going to be an improvement in our health. But uh, it, it really is the application of yourself in you know, the, the gym, the fitness industry, etc. But I work hard to make sure people understand that, especially for us men, right? Because this was my biggest block. We can do it too on a vegan diet, right? A lot of us men, our egos are involved. And we're like, no, we're men. It's our planet. We're meant to eat meat. That animal's mine. God put it on this earth for me to consume. That's not the approach I personally want to take. But I, I know... I can do exactly what that person's doing without doing that. And that's what I want to live. I want to be a living example of that. Anybody else have any other questions? Thoughts, poems, interpretive dance? Cool. I'm Josh Garcia, guys. Please give me your email. I have some great lectures online. I'd love to share with all of you. Thanks for coming out to SoCal Veg Fest. Nice to meet you. Thanks. I'll put my clothes on now.